Thank you very much. Good evening. Welcome to worship on this very special night, and thank you for joining us here in the sanctuary. Tonight, we make our final preparation to celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus. We join with Christians from around the world to draw near to the manger and to huddle around a tiny child. Tonight, we'll share stories of journeys that have brought us this far and pause to wonder where our journeys will take us next. Some of us will band together and travel in the same direction for a while. Others we will meet up with again later on. Some perhaps we will never see again. But we will remember this night, this one and the one long ago. Tonight we will offer ourselves and our lives to Jesus as gifts for him to use as he sees fit. Although we may not know where we will be headed in the morning, we know that the journey has begun again with this gathering on this night, as in a little town called Bethlehem. Whether you're a regular attender, this is your first time with us, or your first time back with us in a while, you are welcome here. For the truth this night is that God has invited us all to experience Jesus' birth anew, and that makes us all the same. People on a life path who yearn for the messages of God, bringing more hope, more peace, more joy, and more love to our lives. Let this be a moment of knowing these can be yours, for you are deeply loved by God. We welcome you to this service of celebration and we pray that this moment you will be filled with all of the blessings of community and with communion with God. So let us take a moment and stand and uh, read together our call to worship that is printed in your bulletins. <coughs> God of angels and babies, Fill the skies with light and song, and fill our hearts with wonder and peace. For on this night, a window to heaven opens, and we catch a glimpse of an incredible love which descends as a child. God of manger and star, open us to the depths and heights of your incredible love, which comes through humble stories and glorious songs. Speak to us in word and music, and lift us to the realms of glory. Oh, let the angels sing, and let our hearts be softened. Let our lives be filled anew with hope and joy. God of the shepherds and magi, open us to the miracle of your love, which enters the world and our lives this holy night. Amen. Emmanuel, God with us, we welcome you this night into the mangers of our hearts. We receive your love found in the child of Bethlehem. Shine your eternal light into the dark places of our lives and free us to share your love with the world. Be with us now in our worship and make your presence known to us once more. Be with us, our Lord Emmanuel. Amen. Please join me in our opening carol, O Come All Ye Faithful. It is number 148 in your blue hymnals. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4.
Sunday of Advent, we lit the candle of hope. The Jews have hoped for many years for the coming of a king and Messiah, which God has promised them. As Christians, we celebrate that Jesus is the hope of the world, our Messiah, who was born long ago in a stable, and who will come again in fulfillment of the scriptures. We relight the first candle in celebration of On the second Sunday of Advent, we lit the candle of peace. We celebrate that Jesus is the Prince of Peace and that following in his steps can and will bring peace to our hearts, our homes, and our world. We yearn for the peace that only Jesus can bring. We relight the second candle in celebration of On the third Sunday of Advent, we lit the candle of joy, representing the great joy we have at the arrival of Jesus, the Christ. The candle of joy is pink in color, reminding us that the light of the world is near. Brighter days are coming. We relight the third candle in celebration of joy. On the fourth Sunday of Advent, we lit the candle of love, at Christmas, we give thanks for the gift of Jesus, our Emmanuel, God with us. And in God's presence, we know love. We relight this fourth candle in celebration of love. Tonight is Christmas Eve. Advent and our time of preparation ends on this night as we celebrate the birth of God's Son, Jesus our Lord. Tonight we light the Christ candle. Our Christ candle is surely a candle of praise as we remember the scene of the shepherds gathered around the Christ child in a lonely stable. Love, hope, joy, and peace all come together in the birth of Jesus. This is the focus of our praise on Christmas Eve. As we celebrate the birth of Jesus and rejoice in his coming to us, we light the Christ candle. Jesus Christ is our hope. He is our peace. He is love. Pure, holy, unending love. Whoever believes in him will never perish, but will have eternal life. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Let us pray. Dear God, fill our hearts with praise on this Christmas Eve. Our souls are ready for the birth of your Son. We are reminded that Jesus is our hope. Through him, we know the depths of your love, and our hearts are filled with joy. May the Prince of Peace rule in our lives forever. Amen. And would you join me in standing to sing, What Child Is This? It is number 162.
those days that the decree went out for Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went to the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, Judea, to the city of David, because Bethlehem, called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house of the family of David. He went to be registered in Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in advance of the flock, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the end.
gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Amen. Um. 
scared. The beautiful words of the Gospel of John begin, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Here ends the reading of God's holy word for this night. Might God add hope and understanding to our hearts as well. When Pope Julius I authorized December 25th to be celebrated as the birthday of Jesus, it was the year 353. And who would have ever thought that it would become the celebration that it is today? And when Professor Charles Fallon lit candles on the first Christmas tree in America in 1832, who would have ever thought that the decorations would become as elaborate as they are today? It has been a long time since 1832, much longer still since 353, even longer still since that dark night brightened by a special star when Jesus the King was born. Yet as we approach December 25th again, it gives us yet another opportunity to pause. And amid all the excitement and elaborate decorations that surround Christmas today, to consider again the event of Christmas and the person whose birth it is we celebrate. The Christmas story, of course, begins in darkness. There was the darkness of oppression, for God's people at the time of Jesus' birth were a conquered people. There was the darkness of persecution. Indeed, it was a despised universal taxation that had brought the participants in the story together on that fateful night. There was the darkness of disillusionment, as there were an ever-increasing number who felt that violence, not faith, was the most effective path forward. Yes, on that first Christmas, the mood was one of despair, resignation. Thus it was then, and for many, it is still now. Many today still live in a world of deep darkness. There are wars and rumors of war, hunger and unemployment, racism and loneliness. Perhaps the poet Robert Frost worded it best when he wrote, I have been acquainted with the night. I have walked in the rain and out of the rain. I have surely been acquainted with the night. I don't have to tell any of you about darkness because in one form or another, at one time or another, it has touched the life of every person here. Many of you have even actually, literally, been in darkness for much of the last 40 hours. You've been acquainted with the night in more ways than one. So we don't come here this evening to naively deny the existence of the darkness. Nowhere in scripture do we receive a pep talk or an argument that things aren't really as difficult as they might seem. Rather, scripture affirms that in life the darkness is real and very present. But it also affirms that there is a light in the midst of all of our darkness. The prophet Isaiah wrote, the people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. John's gospel records that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Thus we come together to sing again the words, yet in thy dark streets shineth the everlasting light. 
The good news of Christmas is that in the midst of a deep darkness, there came a light, and the darkness was not able to overcome the light. It was not just a temporary flicker, but an eternal flame. We need to remember that. There are times in the events of the world, in the events of our personal lives, that we might feel that the light can be easily snuffed out. But the Christmas story affirms that whatever happens, the light still shines. The ancient Hebrews were very much afraid of the darkness. They were particularly afraid of a place they called the outer darkness. To them, creation began when God said, let there be light. To them, wherever there was only darkness, there was only void and emptiness. What great meaning and hope it must have been for them when they heard Jesus refer to himself as the light of the world. We need to hear these words again this Christmas. The darkness is real, but because of Christmas, the birth of Christ, it will never again get so dark that you can't see the light. Into the darkness, God sends an eternal light. As you walk outside this evening, I want you to notice that when the door opens, and you walk outside, the darkness doesn't intrude on the light in this space. Rather, the light intrudes into the darkness, illuminating that space. Light is always stronger than darkness. And the forces of light are stronger than the forces of darkness. Perhaps the greatest need in our mixed up world is to let people know that there is light that there is hope, that there is peace, that there is joy, that there is love. In Christ, we cling to the hope that life overcomes even death, that love conquers hate, that truth will prevail over falsehood. We are the people of light, and we have to share that light wherever we want. I'm convinced that it was not by accident that God chose to use a star to guide the wise people to Bethlehem. I believe it's an eternal reminder to them and to us that in a sea of darkness, it is the light that keeps us going forward. It's the light of hope, the light of Christ that leads the way and dispels the gloom. It's my prayer that the light of Christmas will shine and enlighten the darkened corners of your life. And that you too will discover a new pathway this night to Bethlehem. That you will follow a star and walk in that light. And so here is my Christmas wish for each and all of you tonight. At Christmas, may God open your heart to love, your mind to wonders, your ears to life, and your life to the divine presence. May you experience God's peace in your troubles, God's forgiveness for your guilt, God's presence for your loneliness, God's light on your path. God's guidance for your journey, God's joy in your life. May you know the hope of the Christmas season, the rejoicing and celebration of the carols, the caring found under the mistletoe, the sharing found in giving, the good news proclaimed by the angels, the anticipation and excitement of the prophets, the assurance that all is well, found in the scriptures and the wonder of God's love found in Jesus. May you leave this place tonight with a twinkle of bright lights in your eyes, the wonderful sounds of Christmas ringing in your ears, a vision of the Savior in your mind, the spirit of the season in your memory, the joy 
of the season in your life, the faith of the Christ child in your soul, and the message of the season on your lips. For the coming of God's gracious reign here on earth, and for the glory of God's holy name in all the world. Amen. Would you join me, and you can remain seated as we join in prayers for our world and for ourselves at the Nativity of Jesus. There is a refrain following each prayer printed in your bulletins. Let's pray. Dear God, the message of salvation is proclaimed tonight in the birth of your Son, our Lord Jesus. Give us ears to hear the good news and feet ready to run like the shepherds to tell others about your love made known to us in a manger this night. Hear our prayer, O God. Advent has been a time of waiting, of preparation. As Mary was prepared for the birth of Jesus, you have prepared us to celebrate his birth once again. Help us to be faithful as we prepare for your coming again. Hear our prayer, O oh God. Like Mary and Joseph, we are a people making our way to Bethlehem, making our way toward Christmas. However, we cannot celebrate Christmas without ever encountering the Christ child. Forgive us for putting other things before you and confront us with our need for a Savior. Hear our prayer, O oh God. We kneel at the manger and gaze upon your small body with love, infant Jesus. We recall the faithfulness and courage of Mary. Use our bodies as you did hers in obedience to your will for our lives. Use our hands as you did hers to care for those around us. Use our feet as you did hers to follow where you lead. Hear our prayer, O oh God. Lord Jesus, we remember those in our midst and in your world who are sick, grieving, lonely, without food or shelter, but not without your saving love. We pray for our families, our friends and neighbors, and everyone in our world whose names and needs may not be known to us, but who long for a touch from you this night. We pray especially for those we name before you now or in the silence of our hearts. God, we pray for Janet Lewis. We pray for Jim Donnelly. We pray for Elmer Fisher. Be with our friends, Lord. Bless them with your healing comfort amid your tender and gentle presence. We remember tonight our troops around the world who celebrate your birth away from family and friends. Connect them in love to the body of Christ as they worship this night wherever they may find themselves. Be with them and bring peace to all the nations. Hear our prayer, O oh God. We stand on this silent and holy night, free to begin again, forgiven and forgiving people, unafraid to proclaim you as Lord. May our hearts beat as one with you, child of Bethlehem, as we go forth declaring your glory and your promise of peace in our hearts. Glory to you, O God, and peace to your people on earth. Amen. Jesus said he was the light of the world, and he sent his disciples, his followers, out to be light to the world, sharing the gift of God's love with all people, saying, let your light shine before all people, that they will glorify God in heaven. So I invite you to uh, take the light as it is passed. Our ushers uh, will come forward and get the light from the Christ candle and they will pass it to you in the pews 
And as you receive the candle, remember that, uh, that the light stays uh, upright and you, and you tip, the, tip the candle to receive the light and then yours is the one that stays tall to light the ones in the pew next to you. And be mindful of uh, keeping the wax from dripping while we sing our songs, Silent Night, Holy Night, and then Joy to the World. The ushers will pass the light. Please stand.
carrying Christmas in your heart. Remember that Christ is with you. Remember that God loves you. Remember that the message of Christmas, the true meaning of Christmas, isn't confined to a day, a week, or a month. Allow the grace of God to flow through your hearts. Allow that grace to give you wings of wisdom and understanding so that wherever you go, whomever you meet, you may carry God's torch of love to quietly and kindly illuminate the paths of those living in darkness. You are the light of the world. Go in peace to love and serve your neighbors, your family, your friends, and all whose paths you cross. Merry Christmas. Amen.